Even as Britons here get ready for a weekend of national celebration, Russia prepares for its Victory Day holiday next week. And for a second straight year, the day which marks the defeat of Nazi Germany comes with no sign of victory in Ukraine. Instead, there are signs the Kremlin's military effort is fracturing. Wagner Group mercenaries, who've done much of the fighting in places like Bakhmut, have apparently had enough. Case in point, two videos today and yesterday, and a warning, the video is graphic. They show Wagner leader uh, Yevgeny Prigozhin surrounded by dead fighters in one clip, cursing Russian defense, uh, defense chiefs whom he blames for withholding ammunition from his forces and announcing action that could be decisive in the war. You think you are the masters of this life? You think you can dispose of their lives? You think because you have warehouses full of ammunition that you have that right? I am officially informing the defense minister, chief of the general staff, and the supreme commander-in-chief that my guys will not be taking useless, unjustified losses in Bakhmut without ammunition. So, on May 10th, 2023, we are pulling out of Bakhmut. We have only two or so kilometers left to capture out of 45. CNN senior international correspondent Matthew Chance is with me here in London tonight. He's, of course, had to, uh, has covered this war from both inside Russia and on the ground in Ukraine. Also joining us, CNN national security analyst and former CIA director of Russia operations, Steve Hall. Matthew, can, it's stunning to hear this guy say this. How can he get away with saying this? I mean, and, and or just put in context what Wagner has done and who Prigozhin is. You're right. It, it is absolutely stunning in a country where dissent, criticism of the authorities is just not tolerated, that you can see this man, Yevgeny Prigozhin, um, you know, stand there and swear about the defense minister, swear about the commander of the, the, the military, um, you know, basically criticize you know, in the harshest terms how the, the war in Ukraine, what Russia calls the special military operation, is being conducted and get away with it. Mm. I mean, you have to assume that he's been given the green light by by the Kremlin because the alternative is, it, it, you know, if he really is expressing this, this anger and this, and this frustration genuinely, and he's being allowed to do it in Russia, it speaks volumes about you know, the, 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 the weak state that the Kremlin's in right now. So I, I assume it's the former, that he's being allowed to do it. Steve Hall, you were with the CIA. You spent a lot of time trying to figure out what's, what is the message the Kremlin is trying to send or what's going on. What do you make of this? I mean, is this with the permission of Vladimir Putin? If it's not, why doesn't Putin just crush this person? Yeah, it's really interesting to see how much Putin has allowed Prigozhin to run with this. But there is this tradition in Russia whereby the czar, in this case, Putin, who is effectively the czar, kind of gets a break. And Russian, the Russian people have a tendency to be much more negative and much more critical of those lieutenants and subordinates uh, that are around the czar, largely because they can say, well, he's a good guy and if he were just surrounded with better people. My suspicion is that Putin is playing that for all it's worth. He's essentially letting these guys go at each other uh, in the hope of resolving some sort of power tensions that are going on very likely behind closed doors that we don't see all of. Uh, and it's just sort of sitting back and watching how it's going to play out. Who's going to be the stronger person? Who's going to handle it better? Who's going to be more loyal to Putin? All of those things are at play as we watch how Putin is, tries to manipulate this situation. I, I think that's what's going on, essentially, Anderson. I mean, Matthew, if Wagner Group pulled out of Bakhmud, what would that mean? Uh, well, I mean, they've been fighting for control of Bakhmud for months now, throwing well, thousands, if not tens of thousands of, of, of people. Right. This is where the, these waves of, of conscripts and yeah. convicts have been used as cannon yeah. fodder. I mean, exactly. I mean, proportionally, um, Wagner, Wagner is the is the organization that's been that's been leading that push into into Bahamut, even though it's not particularly strategically important. Mm. Uh, and so it's been a massive uh, sacrificial altar uh, on which thousands upon thousands of, of Russians, I, I, you know, people who have been members of, of Wagner, uh, have died. If they were to, to pull out, that sacrifice would have been for nothing and it would be politically you know, very damaging indeed. Um, you know, uh, even if Wagner says that, Prigozhin says that uh, Russian army units would, would backfill the position. Nevertheless, it would be a massive setback for him because he staked a lot on sort of gaining control of this one city, which he's so far failed to do. And, and Steve, I mean, could someone like Prigozhin ever actually threaten Vladimir Putin's hold on power? And does, does he have any actual military experience or is he just dressing up? 
No, a lot of these guys don't have any previous military experience. Prigozhin and Shoigu, the, the defense minister, you know, not having, you know, really any real military experience. But I think what's going on, one of the things that's going on, because there's a lot of subplots here, is that Prigozhin is saying, OK, just how far can I go? How far can I get? He understands that as an oligarch, which is kind of how he came up through the ranks, he's got to be really careful if he crosses into politics. He's already clearly done that, yet he has yet to suffer, as far as any of us can tell, any negative implications from it. So is he thinking, OK, I might be able to make myself go all the way to the top here or close to the top? I think he's still trying to gauge that. But really, aside from that, it's difficult to, to try to explain why it is that he's taking these risks unless he thinks he's going to get something big out of it.